Um, before we begin, I want to discuss the Jewish theory of relativity. You've heard of the theory of relativity? So, um, in general, if there's a lecture and people eat during a lecture, that's not very respectful. But if people are having lunch and instead of talking, you know, little things in lunch or learning Torah over lunch, they're righteous. So this is officially lunchtime. <laughs> and now you are all righteous. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with eating. In fact, in the middle, let's say I see the food's good. Mm -hmm. And your smile's on your faces. So if you want to get up in the middle and take more, it's not, it's not disrupting at all. It shows that you're thinking. <laughs> so seriously, if you want to get, take, I think they've, yeah, they've brought more out there. Uh, that's fine. If you want to get drinks. Uh, now, um, there's a lot of topics to pick today because, um, as Robert Kaplan mentioned, it's a busy week, busy time of year. There's, we just had Passover. Uh, we have Yom Atzvot, Yom Zikaron. Um, Shavuot coming up, we're coming to Omer, a lot of different topics. What I want to ask you to begin with, we, we'll need the source sheet only a lot later. Don't worry about the source sheet now. You can just listen while you're eating. You can hear me in the back there? If you can't hear, raise your hand and I'll speak louder. You can hear? Oh, I'm kind of see. Now, um, is there any connection between Yom Karon that we have coming up uh, tomorrow and the holiday of Passover that just passed over? Any key Hebrew word that links them together? Yom Karon and Passover. Ah. Say that louder. What, which one is Zechel Yitzhak Mitzrayim? Passover. Oh, okay. Passover. What do we do on Passover? We remember the story of the Exodus. Correct? That's memory. We remember the story of the Exodus. And what do we do on Yom Zikaron? Remember our fallen. Remember people who fallen. So it could be just the same Hebrew word in this car. I want to show you how they're connected. And I want to talk about the concept of, the Jewish concept of Zikaron. Who remembers, pun intended, how many commandments there are in Chumash to remember? Well, you mentioned one. There's, there's a commandment to remember the Exodus. Isn't there? How many times does that commandment come up in Chumash? Remember? Remember that you were a slave in Egypt. A bunch. A bunch. Probably more than ten. Remember you were a stranger in Egypt. It comes up like over ten times. It's like, like we don't have, like we have a memory problem. We're constantly being told to remember something over and over again in Chumash. Uh, we have to understand why. In fact, we have a hol we have a holiday about that called Passover. Uh, and once a year, what do we do? We remember the Exodus, don't we? Once a year, or more than that? Uh, we have every day and once a year. Once a year, we go a little crazy for a week. And then every day, we sort of uh, hit that recall button. Give me another memory. Things we do. But that's we have to remember all the time. Shabbat, how often do we have to remember Shabbat? Once a week. Once a week or every day? Every day. Or once a week? I would say every day. Why do you say every day? Shabbat is the goal of every week. Uh, Shabbat, you, you might hold by the people who say that you're supposed to work six days a week. And that's why we keep Shabbat? Uh, you ever hear that? No. Is the goal of the week Shabbat or is the goal of the week working six days a week? Shabbat. Is Shabbat... Do, do uh, we... They elevate each other. Yeah. Exactly, we'll get to that. But that's something we remember once a week, but every day. Passover once a year, but every day. Um, any other memories? Anyone remember any other ones? We're commanded in the Bible to remember. The word Zachor. What Amalek did to us. Ah, remember what Amalek did to us? That was about a month and a half ago. Once a year or every day? Forever. Forever. I'm sorry, even more. Uh, is it once a year or every day? Every second. Every second, okay. Every millisecond? <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, and um, any other memories? Okay, we had Shabbat, Egypt, and Amalek. Any other ones? Oh, very good. Explain what you mean by Miriam. So, so Chumash told us Lush and Har about Miriam. Didn't it? Yeah. Why does Chumash tell us a story about Miriam? Is that Lush and Hara? You ever wonder? My toilet. Yeah. Uh, for what reason? To learn why we should not be speaking Lush and Har. So by remembering that story, what, what would we do? Or what we, would we not do? Speak Lush and Har. Okay. Do every day or once a year? Every day. Every day. You catching on? There's a lot of memories in the Bible that we have to remember all the time. Constant. Not every second, but constantly. Now, um, 
Back it up for a minute and pretend you're going to a store to buy a new um, iPhone, cell phone, smartphone, um, gadget, whatever it is. Let's say it's been six months and you haven't upgraded yet. And all your friends got upgraded, pretend you're in high school kind of thing. Remember those modes. And you go to the store, and what are they going to ask you in the store? I want to buy a new iPhone. What are they going to ask you? Oh, that's a, uh, that's a, I can't be, I can't say, I can't say that's a girl thing, but that's not PC, right? I can't say that, I'm sorry about that. Um, they're going to ask you what else besides the color? What carrier? What? What carrier? What carrier? Okay, let's say it's an open, whatever it was. It, as far as the, the, the phone itself. They're going to ask you, do you have an upgrade? Yeah, you want an upgrade, but in the phone. What memory? I'm perfect. Uh, say that one. Why'd you say memory? <coughs> Okay, let's start talking. No, no, but before that, it was because the guest didn't want to Perfect, you're anything. catching on though. You caught on? Smart boy. Hmm. You should go to UCF, you should be in college. <laughs> <laughs> Engineering? What are you in? No. Echo, I don't. That's good. Um, now listen, they'll ask you how much memory do you want. Give me, give me examples of what you might ask for. Or what, what do you want what? Do you want 32 gigs? 64. 64. You're a cheapo. You want to go for an 8 gigabyte? What's wrong? You're unemployed? Anything? 16, okay, 32. Now, what difference does it make? Either way, you're not gonna have enough. That's, what do you need that memory for? Let's say you have 128 gigabytes. What are you gonna do with it? Hope you had 264, what? What, for, say it louder? Music and pictures. Music and pictures, pictures, even videos. It's called storage memory, agreed? You're familiar. The more memory, the more pictures you can store. How often do you look at those pictures? Uh -huh. All the time? No. Or when? Yeah. When? When you remember something. Birthday, kind of things like that. All the time or once a year, periodic. Is that it? That's called storage memory. Now, if you're a geek right, and you're looking for a phone, you'll talk about a different type of memory. What am I talking about? There's, there's, oh, you said RAM. You're, you're an engineering person, no? <laughs> <laughs> Who's heard of RAM memory? Or processor memory? You guys are in college. You're on your computer. There's storage memory, your hard disk, and there's processor memory. The speed, it's coming, you know, gigahertz and stuff like that. There's the speed of your computer, but also the memory. It's called cache memory, C A S C A C H, something like that. You're with me, you're in college. No. The cache memory, how often is that running? Do you understand the difference between cache memory and storage memory? Cache memory is not to store pictures. It's for the processor, the more cache memory you have, the more RAM you have, you can multitask and you can work faster. It's functioning all the time. It's the brain of the computer. Now, I hope I understand my analogy where I'm going with this. The memories that we have, our collective memories of leaving Egypt, of Amalek, of Shabbat, are those memories in our storage memory or in our processor memory? Are those memories that affect our behavior 24-7 are those memories for once a year kind of things? Now, what do we do with all of them? Once a year, we bring up all the pictures. Once a year, we go to our storage memory to remember a certain story. But the purpose of going to that storage memory is to enhance our processor memory. Because that memory of those events is gonna affect our day-to-day -day behavior. It's called being transformative. It's a transformative memory, not a nostalgic memory. And that's what I wanna show you today. When I remember something, it's not just remembering an event once a year. Once a year, I make a big deal about it, like Passover, like once a week Shabbat and things like that. But the goal of that memory is for that memory to have an effect on your behavior 24 seven. Now let's start with an easy one. Um, remembering what happened to Miriam. You said that already, didn't you? What's the idea behind that? If I remember that story, what would that lead me to do or not to do? Uh, think twice before I have something juicy to say about somebody, like we all would like to do. It's, it's, it's so easy to do that. We have to remember, I'll, I'll give you another example. Uh, let's say you're driving, you all drive, don't you? Let's say you're driving and the light turns yellow. What are you gonna do? Speed up or slow down? Depends if you're a boy or a girl. I, I'm, I can't stop doing that, I can't stop doing that. I can't do that anymore, can I? No, no, no okay, I'm just joking. <laughs> but let, let's say, if you're, if you're a good person, if you're, what would a boy do? I'm sorry. A high school boy, a high school kid. What would they do? Speed, Speed up. up. Speed up, why? But let's say one time you had a car accident when you sped up. And yeah, what would you do then? Not speed up. You'd slow down, why? Because you went through an experience 
And that experience of that car accident, which everyone should have sooner or later, but not a serious one, because everyone after the first accident is a much better driver. Agreed? It's, no matter what you do, you're better. And that's why premiums shouldn't go up after your first, they should actually go down. But then people would get into accidents on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but usually, that's not nice either. Um, have, I hope you got my point. There's certain events that happen in your life, or certain memories, that go into your um, constant memory, that affect your behavior. You, you see that movie Inside Out? You see oh, yeah. that? Oh, okay. yeah. If you saw the movie, I don't have to explain it anymore. There's memories that are deep in your stores, there's, there's memories that are running all the time. And if you go through a certain trauma or something like that, that can affect you, they'll make you a better driver, a better, uh, let's say you got bullied by somebody, you might want to bully them back, or you might want to learn from being bullied how to be nicer. So let's, let's go back two weeks ago to Passover, to Pesach. Are we remembering what happened or why it happened? We can remember what happened and be thankful to God for our freedom. We can remember why it happened. Why did God in our history put us into suffering to redeem us so that when he gives us the Torah, he can tell us, remember how being people were to you. What did we do with that memory? How do we redeem our history? We take our collective suffering. We, we take the collective experience we went through. We were mistreated by Egyptians. And what do we do with that memory? We don't take vengeance against them. What do we do instead? We treat others with compassion. And that's why you said over 10 times in Chumash it says, remember you were a slave in Egypt? It's always attached to a commandment about sensitivity. And therefore Jewish memory is processor memory. It's, it's a memory of events that I learned from those events. And they become part of me and they guide my behavior. And being chosen to be God's people, we take our collective memory as a nation and we redeem it. And we turn into better people by learning and celebrating those events. If I take it quickly, the Omisi Karon, you have the same idea. I can remember soldiers who have fallen, and it can be nostalgic, it can be kind, it can be gratitude. But also I can remember what they fell for, not only the fact that they fell and they gave their lives to us, we have to be thankful. I can remember what they were fighting for, I can identify with that goal, and that can affect my life decisions. What I do with my life, what organizations I support, what, they, what things I become involved in. And instead of the memory just being something nostalgic, the memory can in some way be redeemed and not go to waste. If, what they did can affect how I behave as a person, what I do, what I dedicate my life to. Yeah. Um, and therefore, memory in Chumash is something very, very basic to being Jewish. I'll give an example from Shabbat, and by the time we finish Shabbat, we should be able to read a source here. I don't wanna, I want you to finish eating. Um, what are we supposed to remember on Shabbat? Well, when you make Kiddush, there's two things, isn't there? Remember Friday night, you make like a toast for the Sabbath day? That Hashem created the world in six yeah. How come I said a toast? You ever been to like a wedding or something and they make a toast to somebody? What do you do at a toast? Who's the first person you thank at a, at a, at a toast? The host. The host. Rhymes. You thank the host for what? For hosting everyone in honor of the, of the guest. So who's the host on Sabbath? God. God. And who's the guest? Us. No, the guest? Shabbat. Shabbat. It's Shabbat. Is it? Is it? I think she's called a Malka, isn't she? She's a quit. I can't quit that gender stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, the, 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 um, we're welcoming Shabbat and we're thanking God, our host, for sending us Shabbat once a week, don't we? And then we give some praises to the Sabbath day. N name me some. You, you know what I'm talking about? You do that every week, don't you? Mm -hmm. What do we call that in English? It's called Kiddush. Mm -hmm. Friday night? You probably never paid attention to the words, did you? Yeah, you're just like you're just smelling the challah and hoping it's homemade. No, and that whole week. <laughs> um, unless it's good whole week. Right. So what do you do? You 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 um, you thank your host, Hashem, who gave us the Sabbath day, and we say three praises for the Sabbath day. What's the first praise? Shabbos is so great. No, that's the psukim beforehand, after the bracha. The Shabbat Praise number one. Zikaron Masse Brishi. God gave us Shabbat so that we remember creation. What else is it? It's Tchilad Mikrei Kodesh. It's the first, it precedes the holidays. That's Parshat Amor. Remember Parshat Amor? We're going to read it in Israel this week, you guys in two weeks. In Parshat Amor, we have all the holidays. You read it two weeks ago on Passover. Before all, this, all the holidays, the whole Moedei Hashem, <coughs> we introduced Shabbat to tell us that Shabbat is more important than the holidays. You know that? Shabbat overrides the holidays, doesn't it? Mm. 
You can't cook on Shabbat if it comes out. Mm-hmm. So before we introduce the holidays, Chumash says Shabbat is more important than the holidays. They're all important, but Shabbat is more important. So we say it's Chilal, it precedes the holidays. Got it? And it's also Zechel Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Remember those three things? Mm-hmm. You never paid attention, did you? <laughs> it's a triple praise. One from Shmot, Zechel Masev Rashid, that's the Ten Commandments in Tech. Sefer Baikra, Parshat Amor, it's Chilal Lemikrai Kodesh. Remember? Moedei Hashem Mikrai Kodesh, if you're a Balkore. And from Dvarim, the Ten Commandments, Zechel Yitzhak Mitzrayim. How is Shabbat remembering the creation? That's simple. It reminds us of the story of creation in seven days. How is Shabbat a memory of the Exodus? How is Shabbat Zechid Yitzhak Mitzrayim? Why does keeping Shabbat remind us that we went out of Egypt? Because we're liberated from the daily... So if you read Chumash carefully, it says, it doesn't say that. It says, Shabbat is in order to give your workers a day of rest. So that you rest and your workers have a day of rest, followed by, remember, you were a slave in Egypt. It's not remembering that he took us out, it's why he took us out. Now we're back to memory. When I keep Shabbat, I remember both creation, we'll talk about that soon. We also remember not only that God created, but also why he took us out of Egypt. Why did he take us out of Egypt? To be sensitized, to be, no, to be kind in our day-to-day life. Therefore, I take a day of rest once a week to remember my connection to God and also my connection to my fellow man. Now, when we remember creation, what, what's that supposed to remind us of? I'll give the same question again. Are, are, we, are we trying to remember that God created man or why God created? You know what the answer is going to be. We don't know the answer. You'd have to be a philosopher. It's, we know that God created. But we, it's sort of tenet of our faith. Something created up there. Um, but why did God make man? How is man different? Well, put it this way. God made what we call nature. How are humans different than every other living thing? you agree with me that humans are different than other living things? Mm-hmm. How to define it? No, that's an argument. Language? But, but we're different. What? It could language. be language, it could be understanding, but they're different. Right. You know that famous line. I, I don't know how to define it, but I, I know what it is when I see it. Mm-hmm. Quoting some chief justice about something, <laughs> but I got to be careful what I say today. Okay. Um, I'm remembering. What am I remembering? I'm, human beings are different. What do they have that animals don't have? Speech. It could be speech. I call it creativity, the ability to create. What Chumash calls what? Selam Elokim. Isn't that it? You've read them. You got that far. You got through chapter one, didn't you? Chumash? There's seven days of, on the last, the last thing that God creates is man in his image. What is God doing during the six days of creating? Creating. creating. Is that it? <coughs> when creation is over, no more creation, nature is set. There are sets of rules. Who's learning physics? Everything's definable, predictable. Shem Elohim, nature. There's one thing that God makes at the end of creation. He makes a living thing with the ability to be created. God made the sun and the moon. Sources of light. <coughs> Are there any animals that make candles? Or electricity? Or lights? Who can make light? Man. Man can make light. And to remember that we light a menorah every day in the big dash. But, but what, what, what did God do? Creation is over. <coughs> the last thing that God created was man with the ability to be creative. Creation is over. You know what begins? Creation of um, man. Civilization. Creation of man. And therefore, what do we do on Mitzvah Shabbat? Yeah, we light fire, don't we? Absolutely. You understand how that now? Because mm-hmm. man's ability to make fire, that's a chiddush. That's a chiddush. That's, that's a novelty. Animals don't do that. Animals don't make lights. Animals don't make bread. Mm-hmm. They eat grains. They, you know, they eat shrubbery, don't they? they submit, no, that's read chumash. Humans refine things that God made. They take God's creation and improve upon it. They're godly. And God gave man that ability to be creative. What can man do with his creativity? Endless types of things. He can do great things, and he can do terrible, terrible, terrible things. things. Correct? What's man need to remember? It's Not only that got created, but why he gave man the ability to be creative. What do I do once a week? I stop all creativity to remember what? My ability to create. My, I, not just to be thankful that God gave me that ability, but what I do with my creativity. Do I do good or bad? Mm-hmm. That's already chapter 2, and that's Ganeda. Chumash is up to something. <coughs> Therefore, the memory of Shabbat mm-hmm. is not a once, it's not, it's a, it's a daily memory, but once a week I make a big deal about it. 
Just like Passover is a yearly memory, which affects my day-to-day -day behavior, which is a daily memory. I'm hoping you're catching the pattern. Therefore, Jewish memory is constant, and it shapes our behavior. It's running 24-7. It's processor memory. And those memories are key. Understanding not only that God gave me the ability to be creative, what I do with my creativity, it's a commandment to be creative, at least six days a week. And I stop all creativity. That's the Malachot of Shabbat. And Shabbat is a time to reflect on my creativity. And that's the idea of Zikaron. Now that man is thankful for his history, for his experiences and learning from them, then I can take those. The same thing with Amalek. The main thing on Amalek is not a vendetta. It's remembering how we were mistreated, how they attacked us when we were unprotected. And we have to remember never to take advantage of unprotected people. Remember what they did to you so you don't do that to them. And should we become a nation one day with the ability mm -hmm. to fight against other people, other nations attacking unprotected people, like piracy and things like that, if we have a nation, then that's something we can do about it. We'll get to that very soon. Now, so that's my introduction about, that's half the show already. But that's, that's, it's Yom Karom. You follow? We just had Passover, and we're coming today to Shavuot. We'll get to, now the next topic will be Shavuot. What happened on Shavuot? The idea I wanted to get across is, Jewish memory is something which is not, it's not your storage memory in your cell phone, it's your processor memory. I use my storage memory to enhance the understanding, but being Jewish is remembering learning from your past. Being a student of your history, not a prisoner, stop. Remember your president, had, you, were, you were too young then. President Obama's first speech was mm -hmm. we can't be prisoners of our history, which is a good point. So we have to be students of our history. And we can learn from our mistakes and we can learn from our good things. Therefore, Jewish memory is key to our behavior. It's not just nostalgic, it's also, it's transformative. Now, um, one of the key events we have to remember also According to the Ramban, we have to remember what happened at Sinai. It's in Sefer Dvarim. Ramban, Nachmanides, has an argument with Rambam whether it counts as a mitzvah. So Rambam, in his uh, work about Shavuot, says it's a commandment to remember Mount Sinai. If someone asked you, like I just did, what are we supposed to remember at Mount Sinai? What's, what's the key understanding? What happened at Mount Sinai? What would you say? I hope you understand my question. Uh, the Exodus. Okay, we remember what happened. I'm not like... What happened at Harsina? You were there, so you should remember. Right. You might have forgotten. Remember you were there? Uh, yeah, we had to There's wait. a website about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a blog. Saw you at Sinai. Yeah. Um, what happened? We waited patiently for Moses to bring down the Torah. We waited patiently. Okay, that's, a, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> it didn't last very long. What? We were a nation. Uh, Pharaoh said we're a nation. We entered the covenant. What? We entered the covenant. Uh, we entered. Oh, you looked at the source sheet. Okay. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> you were there. You had a source sheet back then, also. And how do we know there's a covenant in Har Sinai? Well, what do we get in Har Sinai? What, 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 what's Michelangelo have in this picture there? Remember those two, what's, what are they called? Those two things called the tablets. Tablets. Two, tablets. Not, no, we didn't get scrolls. Yeah, tablets. tablets. We had tablets, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. And what was written on them? The Ten, the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Ten. Yeah. The Ten Statements. Now, um, at the Seder, you asked the question, who knows two? I know two. What'd you answer that? Shein Luchot Abrit. Luchot Which means what? Covenant. Which means the Ten Commandments, what we call the Ten Commandments, are a covenant. Of covenant. <laughs> you, ever under, you ever wonder what covenant that is? How many signs are there to every covenant? Usually. I guess two. You can get married yet. Um, <laughs> that, that, but someone doing law school? No one's being having a lawyer? Contracts? Every contract has two, two sides, two parties? Everywhere. The boss and the worker, the renter and the rentee, mm -hmm. the wife and the husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta stop that. Okay. Um, there's always two sides to, every cup, to everything, isn't there? Mm -hmm. No, and we have to set the rules. Who's this contract between at Har Sinai? Shem and the Jewish people. Between God and the people. And what's the goal of the contract? Well, where should I expect to find it? In what book? Called Chumash, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be before the Ten Commandments. And that's our first source, okay? Now we got our source sheet. Before we get to Ten Commandments, we get out of Egypt, and we're going to have for the first time <laughs> um, the Jewish people, at least, Moshe heard this before, but the Jewish people are going to hear the word Kadosh for the first time. And what's God going to suggest? Want to read out loud? Um, remember, God says, God tells Moshe, come on up. I have a proposal to make for the Jewish people. Go tell them, go tell the Jewish people, look what I did for you. Now let's make a deal. So read plus the K out loud. 
Have it's not clear? Okay. It will run the source sheet now, source name. Read it? Yeah, read it. In Hebrew? In Hebrew is good, yeah. And then people can follow in English. This we call a proposal. What's the proposal or the proposition? If you're willing to what? To obey me. It's if we have a work agreement, who's the boss in this agreement? Who's the uh, owner? Who's the boss? That's God. And who's the worker? The Jewish people. That says, are you willing to obey me? Be my, be my covenantal partner. And then you'll be my treasure nation. We'll see what that means very, in a minute. Mm -hmm. And I'll translate like Ebenezer. Even though I'm the God of all mankind, I'm making a special deal with you. God is the God of all mankind, of all nations. But one nation he separates for a purpose. Okay. What will be the result? I translated here, not a nation of priests, but a priestly nation. I'll explain what I mean in a minute. By using the word Goy Kadosh. What does it mean to be a holy nation? So the word holy is a word in English, but not in Hebrew. Holy, yeah. N name me someone in the Bible who's holy. Moshe, who would you say is holy? Moshe, holy Moshe. Moses? Our forefathers were holy? I'll tell you a little secret. No one in the Bible was called holy. No individual was called holy. Because holy is not a description in the Bible, it's a status. You don't know what status is. I mean, old status. No status, not that. Stat I mean like this. The word lekadesh in Hebrew is to separate. For example, what does it mean that God is kadosh? What's God separate from? He's separate from everything else. And he created. That's something in, in philosophy. That there's a separate God. God is separate from his creation and he created. It's anti-Spinoza. Anyone learn Spinoza? Because Spinoza says exactly the opposite, doesn't he? Yeah. Spinoza says, what is God? The sum total of creation. Jewish thought says exactly the opposite. That's why they didn't like Spinoza. Because God is a separate entity who exists. We don't know what he is. We know that he is. And he created what we call creation. And he made man. But that's for a philosophy class. Um, what did God do? God made man, what we call nature. And the nature of man is to form into nations. God separates one nation from the 70 nations and gives them a job. Whenever we find this type of separation, what we're always going to find is God's going to separate one item from a larger group. You ever learned set theory? There's a universal group and a subgroup. God's going to separate one nation from many nations. Or, or separate, I'll, I'll, let's go to Shabbat. There's seven days in the week. God separates one day of the week and gives it a special status called Shabbos. Does that have an effect on the other six days of the week? Keeping sh by making one day dedicated to God, that becomes the funnel that brings God into every day of the week. That's why I asked you the question in the beginning about remembering Shabbat every day. Meaning, if I want to bring God into my day-to-day -day life, I separate one day of the week and make it special. And by making one day special, that brings God into every day of the week. Let's take our 12 tribes. You've heard of them. God separates one tribe. Which tribe is that? Levites. Levites. Gives them a special status for one goal? To be the liaison between God and the Jewish people. Um, let's say there's a shul in the neighborhood. It's Kadosh, isn't it? Well, the shul here is separate from the other rooms in the building. But the goal of that room is to bring God into every room in the building. Or let's say there's a temple. It's not that God is in a cage in the temple. But I separate one space, sacred space. And that becomes the funnel that brings godliness into the whole neighborhood. And racist real estate. It's a good show. Um, if I take, I talked about time, space, own oh, people. Got it? Whenever I find Dusha, if you follow the pattern, God is separating one item from a larger group, elevating it in the <coughs> service of God. But the purpose of that separation is to become the funnel to bring God into the group it was taken from. And if there's a concept of 70 nations or many nations, God picks one nation and gives them a special status for what goal? Right. The world. And that's what it means to be a Kohen. A Mamlechet Kohanim, the word Kohen is a priest. What does a priest do? A priest, if there weren't priests, no one would know about a God. Priests represent a God, especially gods that have no, can't be seen. It's, it's a job of someone representing a higher authority, a minister in the government. Mm -hmm. It's the same word in Hebrew. Mechahen, like a minister. Therefore, what God is doing, God wants a relationship with all mankind. 
towards his goal of bringing godliness to, to mankind, he separates one nation and gives them a job to do. What's their job? To bring godliness to mankind by acting in a special way, by being a model nation. Now, yeah, question. But there are Kohanim within the Jewish... Ah, there's, therefore, there's a status of... There's what's called a Goy Kadosh, or Mamlechet Kohanim. Therefore, not a... I'm just like translated, not a nation of priests, but a priestly nation. And this is my point about what's revolutionary about Har Sinai and Shavuot. The idea of an individual representing God, every religion has that. That's classic. The idea that a nation represents God, that's revolutionary. Because I can have someone representing God in his day-to-day -day behavior as an individual. Individuals, they don't live forever, do they? 120, I mean, I've told them. Good. A nation can be eternal. And if God wants eternally to have mankind recognize God, God wants an agent down here on earth that's eternal. And therefore he picks a nation because a nation can be eternal. Now, to be eternal, what do you need to do? What does a nation need to become eternal? Ideas. What? Ideas. Well, and on a practical level, what do you need? Ideas. Well, first of all, you need a land. Right? You need people. But people come and go, don't they? So what do those people need to do? Remember. What? What do they need to do? Reproduce. Is that a commandment? Yeah. Better known as? Ruvu. Which the rabbis say is just for the Jewish people. It's a blessing for mankind. For the Jewish people, it's a commandment. That's Sayu with Sane. such a great website for them. There's a commandment to bring up the next generation. And yet, it's not enough to have children. What else do you have to do? Educate. You have to educate them. And that was the Seder, wasn't it? The, trend, the commandment to, bring, to have children and to educate them and, and program their memory. Or brainwash? What do you call it? Call brainwash. <laughs> that's, called, that's called Jewish memory. It starts at a very young age. And that's how we become eternal. And we spend tons of money on that, don't we? Jewish education and Jewish weddings. It's half of our budget. <laughs> but it's worth it because it keeps you going forever. And that's part of being Jewish is being responsible to the next generation as well. Continuing the past and going on. And memory enhances that. But the memory is about being a nation in the service of God. The main way we do it is by how we act. Not only how we act as individuals, how we act as a nation. There's our national behavior. Therefore, we have, we have individual identity, like Doshim to you, this week's Parsha. It's about because you represent God, it's your status, not what you are. It's what you need to be. Because I told you at Har Sinai, about 10 Tilim, I'm Nechet Konei V'Goy Kadosh, I told you, you accepted this covenant to represent me. Here's the guidelines of what that means. It's the first app, I call it. Parsha Doshim. I hope you know what I'm talking about, chapter 19 in Vayikra. It's the first app. The contract is the Ten Commandments. The agreement, the, pro the proposition is what we just read. The contract, I'm your boss, you can't work for anybody else. Right? Keeping Shabbat, a weekly reminder of the covenant. Core values, not to kill, not to steal. And all that, and don't even think about it, the last one. There's a contract about what God expects from us. Respecting parents means respecting tradition. And Shabbat, a weekly reminder. Those are all core things to keep the covenant going. And Kedoshim Q is an application. What does it mean to be Kadosh? Don't be a, remember, don't be a gossiper. Be kind. Be respectful. We, we can read it this week. This week's Torah reading. It's an application of how to become a Goy Kadosh. I, there's a concept. It's a practical application. And from there, I can apply it to other cases. Now, um, therefore, God at Har Sinai separates a nation to become his nation forever. In order to become a nation, at least most nations, have to have a land. What does God do? He separates the land of Israel to be the place where the nation will be. Why there? Lots of different reasons. Maybe it's just something special. But historically, Israel is located right between the two great centers of civilization. Egypt, you learned that in world history, didn't you? at least in Western history. In Mesopotamia, those are the cradles of civilization. And there's that highway that connects the two together. And what's smack in the middle of the highway? The land of Canaan. If we're doing a good job, we have what's called visibility. If we're doing a bad job, what's God gonna do? He'll punish, he's got plenty of enemies to come and try and take over. Like having the land of Israel, from a practical point of view, gives us an opportunity to be like the other nations. It also gives God opportunity to punish us when things go bad, when we're not doing a good job. And that's all the tochachot, all the warnings in the Bible talk about that. And when God chooses Avram Avinu, he's not saying what will be, it's what can be. And that takes us to the next source. I, I, I talked about Kedusha in three realms. We talked about Kedusha of being separated. Shabbat, we talked about. It's a great sheet. We have um, Har Sinai, 
the plant is the land is Kadosh, which is Moshe the burning bush, and set it aside the firstborn, which later becomes Shevet Levi, in the service of God. Now, um, the need for a nation now, and then Shabbat being um, what's called cool Shabbat, and the Mikdash go hand in hand. Shabbat is a weekly reminder of our Sina, and then the Mishkan, that's, that's the end of Source D. Now, um, in Source D, I talk about the need for a land. God wants a nation. And that's how Parshat Lech Lecha begins. We have the background, the first 11 chapters of Rashid about what God expects from mankind as a whole, and how he gets angry when mankind is bad. Then God enters a special relationship with Avram Avinu, and he plants the seeds of a nation with Avram. And therefore, the covenants with Avram Avinu is about how do we become a nation. That was the Seder, Ben Aftarim, our, our history of oppression and redemption that we learned from that. The first thing God tells Avram Avinu is begin a journey, Parshat Lech Lecha. Remember, Pasek, yeah, everyone knows Pasek Lecha, don't you? What's Pasek Vet? God tells Avram, begin a journey where I'll show you. What should Avram expect here next? God comes and tells you, start a journey, I'll show you where you're going to. And I'll show you where it is. What would you want to know? If you're a kid, you want to know how much, what am I going to get out of it? If you're an adult, what would you ask? Where am I going? What's the purpose? What are you going? Put it into ways. God says, I'll show you. Just follow the way. You don't know where you're going. Ways will tell you. <laughs> now, but the next thing is, what's the purpose? What's God say? That's chalo goi gadol, which means what? Is that reward or purpose? Yeah. We see it as reward. Chumash, it's purpose. It's a goal. It's your destiny, what you can be, not what will be. It's, I want you to be great. That God is telling Avram of you, know, not the reward for obedience, but rather the purpose of your aliyah, the purpose of your journey. I want you to start a nation that can be great, because you have to be great to make my name great. Will Avram fulfill that and his children? That's up to them. But God gives us the potential. And then he says, I'm going to set aside a land for you. And therefore, the land of Israel is going to become a vehicle. And that's the title of the source sheet. It's not the goal of being Jewish. It's a vehicle towards representing God. To be a nation in the service of God, you need sovereignty. You need nationhood. And God sets aside a land that didn't belong to us in the beginning, did it? God took it away from the Canaanites for their bad behavior. Gives it to us to be good. And if we act like they did, he'll kick us out. That's one of the biggest themes. It's going to be Parshat Bahar coming up in Book of Bethai. Now, flip the page over. Later in Source E, God's going to explain to the Jewish people what was the purpose of being chosen. And that's Source E, when he has this conversation about stone. What does God say? Um, want to read it again? Read, read, um, read Source E quickly. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, three minutes left, right? You guys have class at 1.30? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll finish in three minutes. Adonai Omar. Remember God said, I can't hide from Avram, but he's about to check out stone to see if it's worth saving or not. Mm -hmm. And now Chumash has to explain why God has to share this with Avram. God's goal for Avram is to become the forefather of this nation that will be great, who will bring blessing to mankind. How will Avram bring blessing to mankind and his children? God wants Avram to begin a family tradition to teach his children and they their children and they their children to follow the way of God, which is doing justice and righteousness. And by doing so, not just Avram, but his, the nation that will come from Avram Avinu, that begins, these are the roots of the nation, can bring blessing to mankind by setting an example. Mm -hmm. and that's the concept of the Jewish people. To be people, you need a land. For that reason, that sets aside the land. Therefore, the land is a vehicle towards achieving that goal. And that's why we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there's another covenant called Brit Bilah, which we're familiar with. How does that begin? Read the first line. And then I'll make a covenant, but not Briti Bene Benecha. What does Avram need to do? He needs to walk with God and be straight and just and quiet. Mm -hmm. And then listen to what he says, this is famous. I'll make a covenant with you. And Avram falls on his face and he prays. And what's he say? Pasik, skip the Pasik, um, every Pasik Dawid, continue. That's what I want to conclude with. God tells Avram Avinu, his name was Avram at that time, and we add the hey. For what reason? Read one more line. Read the 
What does it mean that Avram is going to be an Avram on Goyim? Is that reward or goal? What would you expect it to be? If you're a kid, you expect it to be reward. Yeah. Or you get to have lots of children. You get to have Yishmael and Esav, and they get to fight with each other. <laughs> I don't think that's what it means. And Av means a father. But is Avram going to be a father of many nations or a father to many nations? Hope you understand the difference between the two. The father of many nations is a type of reward. Oh, you get to have lots of kids. You'll be famous. A father to many nations, that's a Kohen, isn't it? It's a responsibility. Yeah. yeah. And in other words, I'm making a covenant. I want a nation that's going to work for me for the sake of mankind. Like a father of the church. Remember, um, Yosef says, I'm a father to Pharaoh. Being a father to someone is being his mentor. And God's explaining to Abraham Avinu, the purpose of why he chose you and why I'm entering a covenant with you is I want you to become a father to mankind. Meaning, you're the mentor. That's your goal. That's your destiny. Will you fulfill it? That's up to you. To help you fulfill that, I'm giving you the ability to do it. I'm setting aside a land for you to do it. And therefore, God says afterwards, continue. Um, skip the plastic sign. Akimoti. <sighs> I'm sorry, let's get Pasik Vav, which is the whole shir. Okay, Pasik Vav. <laughs> I'll give you children. You follow the theme of having children? I'm setting you aside for the sake of nations, and you'll have sovereignty. You'll be a sovereign nation. And therefore, I'll make a break with you, Pasik Zion. To be your God, you'll be my people. And for that, go on Pasik Vav, what's got to get set aside? You understand the idea between the land as a vehicle? And therefore, when we come to Yom Karon, the concept of the Karon, and then Yom Ha'atzma'ut, we're thankful to God for our history. We're thankful for God for returning us to our land again. But that's not just reward for good behavior, that's responsibility to be good. And when we thank God for our history, we're thankful to those who fought and fell to remember what, what happened to us. Mm -hmm. Remember, because of them, we're able to have a country. We're able to be, be the masters of our own destiny. But at the same time, we have to remember the underlying purpose of why God chose us and why He gave us a land. And it's a big responsibility, not just a privilege to have a land of Israel, but it's a responsibility. We should be held to a higher standard. We should live up to a higher standard. And together with thanking God for giving us nationhood again and having our own land, comes tremendous responsibility of acting in a way that sanctifies God. That's, much, that's not an easy thing to do. And hopefully our memory, our national memory of, our, of those who fell and also of our history and the redemption of our history can, that zikaron can become something transformative. It's, it's once a year we remember events, but again, just like in the same way, the memory of why God gave us the land and the purpose of his Jewish nationhood is a memory that we note once a year, but it has to be in our minds 24-7. And that's basically Jewish memory as a whole. It's, it's once a year having events, or <coughs> once a week, or periodically having events to recall the events that happened. But the goal of that memory is to make something transformative. If you go back inside out, it's kind of effect on the process of memory and how we behave 24-7. Okay, so thank you for uh, listening. I'll stay around to answer questions. And again,